So for probability, we're going to look at both theoretical and experimental probability. The first question has a chart. I have numbers on a cube, one through six, so it's like a die, like a dice. And I have the frequency, which is the number of times each one occurs when I roll. I roll this cube, there's numbers one through six. I roll it how many times? Let's figure this out. So first of all, I, need to, I would like to know how many times total the dice was rolled. So I have eight, three, nine, six, add these all up. So eight plus three is 11, 26, 36. So the single die was rolled 36 times and all the numbers were tabulated on this chart. You could have done this experiment at home and made the same chart yourself and done the experiment 36 times as well. Question one says, what is the theoretical probability that an even number will be rolled on a number cube? So for this number cube, even numbers are two, four, and six. The theoretical probability should be based on theory alone, not based on this chart. So not based on the fact that we actually did the experiment. So if I would look at this, I would say, okay, well, there's six numbers on the die. There are one, two, three of them. So out of six numbers, three of them are even. And then what I would say from that, and that's just based on the theoretical numbers there, I could reduce that to one half, I could reduce that to 0 0.5, or I could change the form of that to 50%. So 50% of the numbers on the, on the number cube are even. I don't mind if you write it like a half, 0 0.5, or 50%, because often in probability you can see any one of those, but you have to recognize that each one of those is equivalent. The second question says, what was the experimental probability of how many times an even number was rolled? So same thing, looking at the even numbers, two, four, and six. But this time I'm looking at the experiment. So the actual experiment, the results are tabulated in this table. So I can say, okay, well, a two was uh, rolled three times. A four was rolled six times, that's nine. And a six was rolled six times, that's 15. 15 times the die was rolled. We got even numbers. And that's out of a total of 36 times that the whole experiment was conducted. I can go my calculator, I can take 15 divided by 36, and I get 0 0.416. You could round to 0 0.42, that would be acceptable. And that's also equal to 41 point, whoops, 41.6 repeating percent. So again, we have fraction, decimal, and percent. All are fine. Theoretically, if you roll a number cube 36 times, how many times would you expect to roll the number one? Well, the number one occurs one out of six times. And if I rolled the die 36 times, I would multiply by 36 to see how many times I would get a one. I multiply the fraction with the whole number. Remember, we can multiply tops by tops. I can put 36 over one. I get one times 36, which is 36, over six times one, which is six, which is equal to six times. Okay, so I would expect to get a number one six times. How many times did you actually roll the number one? So if I actually did this experiment and went through, oh look, it was eight times. Okay, so theoretical doesn't take into account if you roll a number cube or if you roll a pair of dice or whatever, you're gonna have a table involved, you're gonna have the dice involved, they might not be um, manufactured perfectly, the table might have some imperfections in it, maybe you're rolling them on carpet. Uh, there's all sorts of different things that can affect the, the way that the frequency occurs. And is it exactly, is it going to be the, equal to the theoretical probability all the time? Probably not. What is the theoretical probability for rolling a number greater than four? Well, numbers that are greater than four are five and six. So theoretical, I'm not taking into account the chart. I would say two out of those six numbers would occur. That would be the probability. So two out of six is equivalent to one out of three, which is equivalent to 0 0.3 repeating or 33 and a third repeating percent. Question six, what was the experimental probability of rolling a number greater than four? So again, number greater than four are these two. I have a four and a six. So I have 10 out of a total number of times of 36 times of rolling the die because this was the experiment. And again, you could convert that to a decimal and to a percent. So I have 10 out of 36, which is 
0.27 repeating or 27.7 repeating percent. And I mean, you can round these if you want to, but you don't need to. You can, you can use the uh, repeating sign as well. Number seven, what is the difference between theoretical and experimental probability? I think we kind of discussed this a bit. Uh, the theoretical probability is if nothing is actually experimented on. We just look at the numbers and we say, okay, this is a perfect uh, cube. No imperfections at all. The numbers on the side of the cube don't affect the way that the, the dice roll at all. The actual experiment, though, when we actually conduct the experiment, there are a lot of other external factors that can uh, weigh in on the changing the results uh, from the theoretical probability. So hopefully that makes sense to you, that there are a lot of different factors. Let's look at this example here. Uh, Amanda uses a standard deck of 52 cards. So this is a pretty um, standard question in probability, is dealing with dice and cards and all sorts of things that uh, require chance or have, have chance involved. She recorded the suit of the card she picked and then replaced the card. The results in the table are to the right over here. So first of all, again, what I want is I want the total number of times she conducted the test because I need that, I need the total to find the probability. How many out of how many total? So this is all tallies. So we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 22, 26, 27, and 30. So the test was conducted 30 times. She picked and picked a card 30 times, put it back in the deck, picked it out, put it back. Based on her results, so the experiment, the actual chart, what is the experimental probability of selecting a heart? Here are the hearts. I can see that there's nine of them. Five plus four is nine out of a total of 30. And you could leave that. You could reduce the fraction. I don't mind. I mean, if you want to reduce the fraction, divide by three, you get three out of 10, which is totally fine, or 0 0.3 or 30%. Um, again, probability doesn't necessarily have to be reduced to the lowest fraction because the nine out of 30 tells me just as much information, actually tells me a little bit more because I can tell exactly how many times the test was conducted. But if we're just looking at the probability, it doesn't matter because nine out of 30 is equal to three out of 10. What is the theoretical probability of selecting a heart? The first thing you need to know for this is, again, not looking at the chart, how many hearts are in a deck of cards? Well, hearts make up one suit. There are four suits in a deck of cards, hearts, spades, diamonds, and uh, clubs. And of those all, there are 52 cards in a deck, or yeah, cards in a deck completely. So if I take 52, divide by four, because there's four suits, I get 13. So the actual theoretical probability should be 13, because we have ace through 10, jack, queen, king. So that's 13 cards out of a total of 52. That should be the theoretical probability of getting a heart. So 13 out of 52 is 0.25. So we know that's equal to a quarter or 0 0.25 or 25%. Okay, so a quarter or 25% of the deck are hearts and that should be my probability of actually getting a heart from the deck. Based on her results, what is the experimental probability of selecting a diamond or a spade? When you see this word in probability, or, it means plus, or add the two results together, because uh, your probability of getting something is greatly increased if I say or. You get this or that, oh, if I get this, I win, or if I get that, I win. So it doesn't matter which one. If I, if I, if I change it to and, then I have to get this and that, it's different. Or is quite different. So or, we add the probabilities together. So experimental probability of getting a diamond or a spade, whereas diamonds are up here, spades are down here, we add them together. Five, six, uh, we'll do five, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I get a total of 18 out of 30. Again, this is my experimental probability, so I'm looking at the chart. 18 out of 30, um, again, again, you could reduce that, you could divide each by six. So you end up getting three out of five, which is totally fine. Um, three to five, which is 0 0.6 or 60%. Okay, so diamond or, or whenever you see that word, it means adding. What is the theoretical probability of selecting a diamond or a spade? So again, diamonds, there are 13 of them. Spades, there are also 13. Remember, I have a total of 52. So I add 13 and 13. I get 26 out of a total of 52, 
are diamonds or spades. Uh, so I add the probabilities. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking 13 out of 52 plus 13 out of 52 to get 26 out of 52. Remember, or I add uh, 26 out of 52 is equal to a half or 0 0.5 or 50%. Compare the results and describe your findings. You can basically just say, well, look, the experimental probability of doing it was 60%, but the theoretical is 50. So I actually, she had a higher probability of getting a diamond or a spade. And same thing up here. Based on her experiment, it was higher than the actual theoretical. That's how you could compare them. Last uh, example here, our